Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most gracious the most merciful alhamdulillah indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise upon all conditions the difficulties we go through are nothing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to resolve may he resolve them may he grant us ease may he open our doors no matter what we are suffering no matter what we may be, may be going through we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us ease in that and to overcome for us these problems issues and difficulties still we say alhamdulillah ala kulli hal we praise allah upon all conditions was salatu was salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in we send blessings and salutations upon muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his household his companions those who struggled over the centuries for the deen to be preserved for it to come to us today such that we are sitting in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this deen may we appreciate their effort by sending blessings upon them and may we be from among those who fulfill the right of this deen to learn it preserve it take it seriously put it into practice and convey it to others so that the maker alone can be worshiped may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen every one of us amen my beloved brothers and sisters a beautiful evening from amongst the blessed eves of the month of ramadan we feel the softening of the heart the calmness within this beautiful house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just after we have engaged in so much in terms of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely if we can engage in that which is voluntary for the sake of Allah it should strengthen us regarding that which is compulsory for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is a point that we need to ponder over and reflect and do something about we read surah an-nisa this evening which is the chapter named after women Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so many things in the surah but I want to start off with something that might surprise you he speaks about the prohibition of suicide wala taqtulu anfusakum inna allah kana bikum rahima don't ever commit suicide Allah says wala taqtulu anfusakum do not kill yourselves for indeed Allah is most merciful upon you in the next verse he actually says those who do that shall be cast into hellfire may Allah grant us a deep understanding today we are searching for contentment the difficulty is we are searching for it in the disobedience of Allah as a result we become discontent we are people who've lost even the little that we've had because while searching for happiness we're looking for it in money in material items we're looking for it in illicit relationships we're looking for it in intoxicants in gambling in drugs we will never ever find contentment except through the owner of contentment who is your maker and mine rabbul izzati wal jalal if you worship him you will find that happiness the one who believes the one who disbelieves allah says something in the same surah which is amazing he says we both will suffer the believer and the disbeliever they shall both go through difficult times they shall both be in pain but Allah says we want you to know what arjuna min allah ma la yarjun the difference is you have hope in Allah what they don't have number 1 is your belief will make it easy for you to go through the difficulties it brings you closer to Allah don't we agree my brothers and sisters those who are in greater hardship in most cases their hearts are softened towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and many times when life is very easy and everything is flowing we find ourselves distant from the almighty so the almighty taps us and tells us you know i need you to come closer to me if this is going to be the only way that you're going to come closer to me so be it and suddenly you have a difficulty a hardship you turn to allah you are found in the masjid brother sister what happened and you say i'm going through hardship allahu akbar that was the mercy of allah so allah says we have hope even if we don't get what we want in this world we still have hope that all the supplications we've engaged in the dua that we've made will result in our entry into jannah because dua alone is an act of worship 
Dua on its own, when you supplicate and call out to Allah on its own, it is confirming the greatness of your maker. That's why you are calling out to Allah. So even if you don't get what you want, keep on asking. You will have hope in one of two things. Either Allah will give you what you are asking or Allah will keep it for you in the hereafter in a bigger way. And when you see the beauty of what you shall receive in the hereafter, you will be from among those who really thanks Allah for not having given you what you wanted earlier because that which you will receive later is going to be everlasting. Imagine if you ask Allah for goodness in this world, you get it. How long will it last? Maximum, if you're lucky, say, bonus, Cape Town, 100 years, mashallah. But subhanallah, beyond that, will that goodness last? Then forever and ever and ever you need another goodness. So in the dunya here, we are taught whenever you ask for goodness in this world, do not forget the hereafter. It is the hereafter that is actually abqa. Abqa meaning it is going to be, it is everlasting. We heard this verse in Surah Al-A'la tonight, which was recited by the Imam in Salatul Witr. Wal-akhiratu khayrun wa abqa. Allah says, you all tend to love that which is immediate in terms of this world. We want you to know the hereafter is better and it is everlasting. Wow. So when you are working, work for goodness in this world. It does not mean that you are religious. So you, you cannot afford to look at the best of cars and homes. If Allah has blessed you with that wealth and it's halal, alhamdulillah, you're paying your zakah, you're giving your charity and so on. You are allowed to have good things in this world and ask Allah for goodness. But not at the expense of the hereafter. We don't do haram. When we do haram, you know what happens? There comes a stage when we become suicidal. I've had many cases of people who ask for help because they are suicidal. When you dig a little bit deep, a lot of them, the reasoning would be connected to sin. We are far from Allah, involved in sin, a life of disobedience. Where do we expect that happiness? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no matter what, turn back to Allah. No matter what you've done, have hope in the mercy of Allah. Keep asking, have that hope. There are so many of us who are trying to achieve something and we cannot achieve it nowadays. To find a job is not so easy anymore. Keep on looking, keep on trying. The day you give up is the day all hope is lost. But in the eyes of Allah, for as long as you do not give up, Allah never gives up. Subhanallah. You want to keep going, Allah will keep going. Imagine this is a verse of Surah An-Nisa. Who would have expected it? Another very interesting verse that comes up in the same Surah. We have a difficulty. All of us here are brothers and sisters. Those who are outside, who are not even Muslim, are our brothers and sisters in humanity. We tend to forget this at times. We tend to think they are our enemies. No, they are not. They are our brothers and sisters in humanity. Many of us have family members who are not Muslim. They are still your family members. Many of us have parents who are not Muslim. They are still your parents. You still need to fulfill their rights. Be kind to them. Understand that the ultimate judge is Allah. Your duty is to convey goodness to them in the best possible way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses this matter in a unique way. In more than one verse of this beautiful surah. But an interesting verse was regarding the wars that were taking place. And the people who were traveling on earth, when they saw someone who said, Assalamu alaikum to them, they started doubting their hearts. Why is this person greeting me? They're not Muslim. Allah says, وَإِذَا ضَرَبْتُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا ضَرَبْتُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَتَبَيَّنُوا وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ أَلْقَى إِلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامَ لَسْتَ مُؤْمِنًا O oh, you who believe, when you go out in the cause of the Almighty on earth and you are traveling, then you must authenticate thoroughly and don't ever say to someone who greets you with salam that you're not a mu'min. You're not a mu'min. Brothers and sisters, don't we have that disease today? Small thing. A person, never mind salam, they are reading the shahada. We are taught that if there is one sign, what is the sign? They are saying assalamu alaikum to you. There is nothing to negate it openly. You cannot say this person is not a Muslim. They've greeted you with salam. You take it at that face value. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. The disease we face today, people are saying the shahada. 
La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We say this one is a kafir, this one is a fasiq, this one is a fajir, this one is a mushrik, this one is a mulhid, and all of the people are going to Jahannam. Well, then why did Allah make Jannah? Who's going to be there? Just you? It is something to think about. You hear these people say those ones are going to the fire. Those ones are saying these ones are going to the fire. A third party says both of you are going to go to the fire. And a fourth one says no, no, no. All of you are going to go to the fire. <laughs> well, subhanallah, the, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Who's going to be in Jannah? We will be surprised. We will be surprised when we enter Jannah. Brothers and sisters, work towards Jannah. Work towards love. It's a religion of love and goodness. Surah An-Nisa speaks about the family unit and how important it is to work with one another. When we have problems, Allah says in Surah An-Nisa, وَالصُّلْحُ خَيْرِ No matter what, to work your matters out and solve your problem is way better for you than to break a relationship. That's in Surah An-Nisa. Many of us are quick to break a relationship, even if it's, with our, if it's with our own spouses, with our family members, with our community members, with people in the same masjid. I recall a brother telling me, I no longer drive in this direction. I go to a masjid that's two kilometers away. I say, why? He says, there's one uncle there that I have a problem with. I said, brother, in the other masjid, soon you'll have a problem with two uncles because it's two miles away. Subhanallah. That's not how we operate. Greet each other genuinely. You have a problem, make an effort to resolve it. Surah An-Nisa says, لا خير في كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس. There is no goodness in the private meetings that we have in order to strive to achieve something unless it is encouraging something charitable. You know, it's not easy to give. Many of us have. The more we get, the less we give. Can I prove it to you? Can I prove it to you? Subhanallah. Those who earn a thousand rands, when they give, they give hundred rands, 20 rands, 50 rands. Work out the percentage and those who have 100 million, how much do they give? It's become a small figure percentage-wise. Why? Their excuse is my money is tied up. Well, we don't want to tie, be tied up in our graves one day. And in the hereafter, you see all the palaces of everyone. What's going on here? Well, your palaces are all tied up, isn't it? Subhanallah. You need to do something about it, my brothers and sisters. You cannot keep on thinking that I'm going to amass and amass. You're going to go to Allah. The winners are those who have spent in the cause. That's why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says... Those who have the greatest reward for their charities are those who give while they are fearing that they might lose out themselves or get into poverty. But they have hope that Allah will never do that for them. That's the best charity. So learn to give. This is a month of Ramadan. Isn't it a month of charity? Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, don't hesitate. Don't just give out the zakah. You know, when we have salah, we have the farad. And on top of that, we have sunnah and nafil. When we have charities, we have the zakah. And on top of that, we have sadaqat. And that which is voluntary, we need to give out more. More than what just Allah has asked us for. I can't just work out two and a half percent of my savings, etc. And say, right, this is farad. That's it. And I'm, I'm not going to give more. We have to give more because when you give more, you are now proving that you are the one who has a feeling for others. The minute you have this compassion towards others, you're a true mu'min. Do you know why? Because kan Allahu fi awni al-abdi ma kan al-abdu fi awni akhihi. Allah continues to assist a worshipper for as long as that worshipper continues to assist another. Subhanallah, subhanallah. You want the help of Allah? You have a problem. Quickest way of solving the problem, go and help others in a bigger problem. You'll realize how small your matter is. The suicidal issue we spoke about earlier will become such that you look at yourself and say, I can't believe I was suicidal. Look at these people. They are living so happily and they have less than me. Subhanallah. They have less than me. Today we, took, we take a look at the wars that are taking place across the globe. The minimum we can do is reach out to them through our dua. And through a charitable token, a token to say those who are working to bring them food and drink, clothing and accommodation, let us at least contribute in that direction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance. So Allah says those meetings we all have, what are they for? 
When you have a meeting, everyone is giving it a lot of importance. You close your doors and you want to discuss something. Mostly it's to do with money. Allah says the goodness of those meetings will only be reaped by those who are discussing charity, charitable deeds. That's why I diverted a little bit to speak about charity. And, and then, ma'roof means goodness, some form of goodness that we are doing. We are encouraging something really good amongst each other. So we have a meeting to encourage goodness, not for myself, for each other. Remember, you want to do good. A lot of the times, another person has to be involved because you're going to be doing good to someone. Subhanallah. By doing good to someone, you're actually doing good to yourself. If I want to earn Jannatul Firdaus, there are two primary ways of achieving it and many other ways, but two primary ways. What are they? Taqwallahi wa husnul khuluqi. I develop my relation with Allah and I develop my relationship with the rest of the creatures of the same Allah. One is known as consciousness of Allah. The other one is known as the height of goodness in character and conduct, which would include, include being charitable, being kind, being respectful, uttering words that are beautiful. That's how I get Jannah. In this month of Ramadan, I want every one of us to make a promise. Starting with myself. All the vulgar, hurtful and abusive words we utter, we will cut them. We promise Allah that. Is that a good enough promise? Are we promising Allah? That was not loud enough. I think some of them are still thinking, hey, all those F's and B's that I utter. And that's a reality. We pepper our speech with dirty words and we are mu'mineen and it's the month of Ramadan and we cannot promise Allah to cut it out. You will achieve so much of respect as a human being when you speak respectfully. That's all. Allah promises that to you. You cut it out so much so the hadith actually warns us about something that a lot of us are guilty of including myself and that is slang. To stay away from slang, slang, speak proper language, no matter what language you speak, but speak a proper language. You know, I thought about it very hard when I learned this hadith at the end of Riyadhus Salihin. And I thought about it, I said, how come the Prophet ﷺ is speaking about slang, to avoid slang? And I came to a conclusion some years later that those who speak with good words, they are respected. So Islam is telling you when you use kind, good, respectful words automatically, you're going to lead a life where everyone looks at you with respect. They're not going to talk to you with cheap language. They know this person respects himself, so we must respect him too. This sister respects herself, we must respect her too. But when your language is cheap, what happens? You drop yourself down. The value of your own person becomes lower because cheap language. So then I thank Allah and I still thank Allah and I've always thanked Allah. And I've always said, oh Allah, strengthen us to use beautiful language when we speak so that people can respect us and we respect them as well. So that is a point that I would like everyone to promise. We become more conscious of what we take out of our mouths. Our wives, our husbands, they deserve the most beautiful language. Our parents, no matter how much you disagree with them, even your in-laws deserve kind speech. Can you believe it? Subhanallah. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. I was just checking if you guys were awake, you know, after a long taraweeh, mashallah. Even your in-laws deserve kind speech, wallahi. And it will solve a lot of matters. Let's learn to respect one another, trust one another. Now we get to the crux of Surah An-Nisa. I've spoken about it in this masjid many times. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commences the surah with a warning for all of us to say, fear Allah. Be conscious of Allah. When Allah says fear Allah, he doesn't want you to become scared. That's not the meaning of the term fear. What he means is become conscious of the fact that there is heaven and hell and work in a direction that you protect yourself from hellfire. That's the true meaning of taqwa. And taj'ala baynaka wa bayna adhabillahi wiqaya. To create between you and the punishment of the Almighty a barrier. So in short, we say fear Allah. But it's actually fear the punishment of Allah. Because Allah is the most beloved. We should be loving Allah. 
We should be close to Allah. We should have hope in Allah. All the names he uses when we read the Quran, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Ar-Ra'uf, Ar-Rahim, etc., etc. All the time we hear most gracious, most merciful, most forgiving, beneficent, etc., etc. These are the lovely names of Allah. So I love Allah and I want my children, my family members, the ummah to love Allah. So I'm not scared, but I am concerned because I fear the punishment of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a subtle difference there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from his wrath, his anger and punishment. So Allah says at the beginning of the surah, and this verse is repeated when people are getting married. You will hear, Ya ayyuhan nasu attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. What comes after that? Can we say it? A lot of you know it. Many of you have forgotten the day you were married. Subhanallah. Forgotten. There was a verse read, O oh people, be conscious of your Rabb who created you from a single source, a single soul, and from it, its partner. And from the two of them caused a multitude of male and female to spread across the entire globe and earth. So fear he, Allah, whose name you use to swear an oath and be conscious of your family members, your relatives, those whom you are connected to through the wombs. Because Allah is the one who chose those wombs. I didn't choose the womb that I was going to be in. Allah chose it. So Allah warns us. That verse is asking us to respect women. 1438, 39 years back, the hijra happened. These verses revealed at a time when people used to abuse their women. I'd like to think that today, we are getting back to a new type of abuse. May Allah make us conscious of the fact that we have rights to fulfill. People ask, well, who is higher? Isn't a man supposed to be higher than a woman? It's a question a lot of people ask. You haven't understood. You haven't understood. We are equal in terms of closeness to the Almighty as human beings. We are equal in terms of spirituality. Allah has physically created us different, so we honor that difference of the physical nature by taking into consideration and understanding the values that Allah has asked us to instill within us regarding the opposite sex both ways. So a man has a role to play, a woman has a role to play. Certain things are overlapping. Certain things one cannot do, the other one can, and vice versa, such as bearing a child, and so on. So many things, I don't even need to mention them, you would know. But we cannot say she's lower. How can you say she's lower? In what way? To Allah, she might be higher. How many of us have heard of Ummahatul Mu'mineen, Aisha radiallahu anha? I ask you, who is higher, you or her? She's a woman, subhanAllah, way beyond. So it's your relationship with the Almighty that makes you higher than the other. Don't ever think that one is lower than the other in terms of their access to the Almighty and their closeness, the closeness they could achieve. Perhaps they may be even closer than you and I. May Allah make it easy for us. But indeed, men are supposed to look after their family members. They're supposed to look after their women. They're supposed to take care of a lot of what is required within the family. It's something Allah placed on your shoulders. May Allah make it easy for us. That was a loud Amin. MashaAllah. May Allah may really make it easy for us then. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. So my brothers and sisters, the Surah An-Nisa commences in this way. It continues where Allah says, don't cheat your women. Don't cheat your women. In what way? So Allah tells you, you know, when someone passes away, there's wealth. The wealth needs to be distributed in a specific way. Don't cheat them. Don't undervalue the buildings and don't hide the estate. They might be vulnerable at times because of orphans, because of them being orphaned or whatever other reason. They may not be directly involved in that business, but you need to know, fulfill that right. Don't cheat them. I'd rather give them something that they're happy with, that they know is correct than to cheat them and face the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah says those who have cheated in inheritance and they have shortchanged their women, Allah says, يُدْخِلْهُ نَارًا خَالِدًا فِيهَا وَلَهُ عَذَابٌ مُّهِينٌ 
It's very severe. Allah says that person will be entering hellfire for a long, long time. You know, Khalid and Fiha actually means forever. But the Mufassirin say that it, it, it's either because you have turned away from Allah completely by oppressing them or by cheating in inheritance or it's, it means you will be there for a very long time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make that happen to us. My brothers and sisters, everyone loves wealth. Everyone loves nice things. But I repeat, not at the expense of your link with your maker. You will never enjoy. Look at those who have won. And I actually went in to do a study. You can actually Google it. It's quite easy. Those who've won lotteries of millions, 90% of them suicidal. Go and read. I promise you, not a joke. 90% of them suicidal. Many of them did commit that suicide. Read about it. But they won 90 million, 100 million, 500 million, 20 million, 2 million, 5 million figures that if we were to hear them, we would just think they are Zimbabwean dollars. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to respect one another. And Allah says clearly in the Quran, you will fulfill each other's rights. Like I said, mention is made of the, va the values of the family unit. And Allah says, when you have a problem, don't seek divorce. No, your first step is to solve the problem and to try again and again. And if really there is nothing that will be done about it, then you can consider divorce as a blessing. And when divorce happens, Allah says, don't become ugly. Don't start your mud slinging. Imagine all these verses are in Surah An-Nisa. Allah says, ultimately at the end when you've tried to solve your matters more than once and you haven't managed, at the end if you were then to divorce, Allah will bless both parties with goodness for as long as they're both good. Someone asks you, you, you know what? I want to marry your ex-wife. How was she? Huh? <laughs> what? The Sahaba radiallahu anhum were asked that question. In fact, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to go and say, you know what, I was married to her, we were two different people, but I think she'll get along with you. Try saying that to someone here today. <laughs> I don't know, may Allah forgive us. Shayateen are tied up, <laughs> they might break the shackles and decide to return. No, that won't happen, inshallah. That won't happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. But I'm showing you how they respected each other. They were married. Allah says, how could you talk bad about each other when you undressed in front of each other? Which means they knew everything about you. It's your duty, amana, trust to look after that. You can say, you know what? We didn't get along. Good person, we didn't get along. You really have something to say, look, I'd be a bit careful. But anyway, subhanallah, may Allah make it easy for us. May Allah make it easy. If there was something really nasty, like drugs, like something really bad, it's your duty to respectfully say, look, we had this problem, but I hope that it is resolved. And inshallah, if it's working with you, let it happen. Because you're not allowed to lie either. But we're talking about unnecessary, much slinging. People come in and throw as much as they want. And another very big disaster, Allah makes mention about this as well. When you are separating, Allah will provide for you on condition that you are good. And Allah says, if you want to solve the problem, both parties want to resolve a matter, it will be resolved. We have a disease today. Small thing happens, divorce. I want out. Make an effort. One year, two years. What? One year? Are you mad? One week is more than enough. Subhanallah, we are becoming so fragile that we don't even want to make an effort regarding our relationships. That's why the world is in chaos. Because when the family unit is chaotic, the children, they are doubting their own identity. I met a child saying, I don't know if I'm male or female. I said, how come? He says, you know, I really don't understand. We got to the bottom of it. The mother and father fighting like cats and dogs in front of the children and everything was happening vulgar, immoral, abusive, X-rated, all in front of the kids. The child is, it's, they're too young to know all about this. You, your duty is to protect the child. Why did you bring the child into this earth? May Allah forgive us. Why did you get married if you don't have time for your spouse? My friends, where? My friends. Football, what football? Bring the ball home, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. <laughs> might score a few goals <laughs> my brothers and sisters it's a fact happiness in the home is something we should openly discuss because we are facing a problem a challenge 
We should not be ashamed of addressing this matter. So the winners, the champions from amongst us, the Prophet ﷺ says, خيركم 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 The best from amongst you are those who are best to their wives. And I am the best from amongst you to mine. That's what he says. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When I said this hadith to some young people who were married, you know what point they picked up? People pick up what they want. What did I say? The best from amongst you are those who are best to their wives. They say, I'm waiting for the S at the end. Then we'll see what happens. May Allah forgive us. You can't even manage one and you're busy thinking of the S, plural. Today when I was coming through, my friends were telling me, what are you going to talk about? I said, well, we're reading Surah An-Nisa. I've been given 29 minutes and 60 seconds. In other words, 30 minutes. But subhanallah, they said, why don't you talk about polygamy? So why don't you talk about polygamy? My brothers and sisters, sort your life out. You know, it's like talking about building a huge building, but you don't have $5 in your pocket. First, get the $5, subhanallah. First, understand there are so many things. It's a topic that really... It is there in the Sharia. Ah. We know how it is discussed in the Quran. Nothing's going to ever change from the Quranic teaching. Ah, it's not from me or from you. It's there. No one can deny what is there. But how can you decide to promote things in a way that the marriages or the houses will be destroyed and children will be lost because people don't know that we need to work on something we have to start off with. I can't open five branches when I haven't yet opened one properly. Subhanallah. I can't have my business expand when the first one is running on a loss. I hope you've understood what I've said. May Allah help us concentrate on our families. Remember the winner is not he or she. Who the whole world looks at and says, wow, what a lovely person. But the one whom your spouse looks at and appreciates. And in order to get that appreciation, you are going to have to work very, very hard. You are going to have to work very, very hard. So Surah An-Nisa, you and I know it's very long. You know, when you sit and open the, the, the chapter of women, you'll read it, you'll read it. It takes more than 30 minutes. So my time is clocked. My brothers and sisters, may Allah bless you all. I really hope and pray that the dose we have had today Really, it will help us to become better people, more conscious of how we treat our women. And inshallah, more conscious the women become of how to treat the men too. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us jannatul firdaus. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.